Georges Henry Joseph Edouard Limater, the 17th of July 1894 to 20 June 1966, was a Belgian priest, astronomer, and professor of physics at the Catholic University of Leuven. He proposed the theory of the expansion of the universe, widely misattributed to Edwin Hubble. He was the first to derive what is now known as Hubble's law and made the first estimation of what is now called the Hubble constant which he published in 1927, two years before Hubble's article. Limater also proposed what became known as the Big Bang Theory of the Origin of the Universe, which he called his hypothesis of the primeval atom, or the cosmic egg. Early life. After a classical education at a Jesuit secondary school, Limater began studying civil engineering at the Catholic University of Leuven at the age of 17. In 1914, he interrupted his studies to serve as an artillery officer in the Belgian army for the duration of World War I. At the end of hostilities, he received the Belgian War Cross with palms. After the war, he studied physics and mathematics, and began to prepare for the diocesan priesthood, not for the Jesuits. He obtained his doctorate in 1920 with a thesis entitled L'approximation des fonctions de plusieurs variables réelles, written under the direction of Charles de la Vallée-Poussin. He was ordained a priest in 1923. In 1923, he became a graduate student in astronomy at the University of Cambridge, spending a year at St. Edmund's house. He worked with Arthur Eddington who initiated him into modern cosmology, stellar astronomy, and numerical analysis. He spent the following year at Harvard College Observatory in Cambridge, Massachusetts with Harlow Shapley who had just gained a name for his work on nebulae, and at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he registered for the doctorate in sciences. Career. In 1925, on his return to Belgium, he became a part-time lecturer at the Catholic University of Leuven. He then began the report which would bring him international fame, published in 1927 in the Annale de la Société Scientifique de Brussels under the title, Un Universe Homogénie de Masse Constante de Rayon Croissant Rendant Compte de la Vitesse Radiale des Nebuliuses Extragalactiques. In this report, he presented his new idea of an expanding universe but not yet that of the primeval atom. Instead, the initial state was taken as Einstein's own finite-sized static universe model. The paper had little impact because the journal in which it was published was not widely read by astronomers outside Belgium. Limater translated his article into English in 1931 with the help of Arthur Eddington but the part of it pertaining to the estimation of the Hubble constant is not translated in the 1931 paper for reasons that have never been properly explained. At this time, Einstein, while not taking exception to the mathematics of Limater's theory, refused to accept the idea of an expanding universe. Limater recalled him commenting, Vos calculs sont correct. Mais votre physique est abominable. The same year, Limater returned to MIT to present his doctoral thesis on the gravitational field in a fluid sphere of uniform invariant density according to the theory of relativity. Upon obtaining the PhD, he was named ordinary professor at the Catholic University of Leuven. In 1930, Eddington published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society a long commentary on Limater's 1927 article, in which he described the latter as a brilliant solution to the outstanding problems of cosmology. The original paper was published in an abbreviated English translation in 1931, along with a sequel by Limater responding to Eddington's comments. Limater was then invited to London in order to take part in a meeting of the British Association on the relation between the physical universe and spirituality. There he proposed that the universe expanded from an initial point which he called the primeval atom, and developed in a report published in Nature. Limater himself also described his theory as the cosmic egg exploding at the moment of the creation. It became better known as the Big Bang. 
theory, a pejorative term coined during a BBC radio broadcast by Fred Hoyle who was an obstinate proponent of the steady-state universe, even until his death in 2001. This proposal met with skepticism from his fellow scientists at the time. Eddington found Limater's notion unpleasant. Einstein found it suspect because he deemed it unjustifiable from a physical point of view. On the other hand, Einstein encouraged Limater to look into the possibility of models of non-isotropic expansion. So it is clear he was not altogether dismissive of the concept. He also appreciated Limater's argument that a static Einstein model of the universe could not be sustained infinitely into the past. In January 1933, Limater and Einstein, who had met on several occasions, in 1927 in Brussels, at the time of a Solvay conference, in 1932 in Belgium, at the time of a cycle of conferences in Brussels and lastly in 1935 at Princeton, traveled together to the U.S. state of California for a series of seminars. After the Belgian detailed his theory, Einstein stood up, applauded, and is supposed to have said, This is the most beautiful and satisfactory explanation of creation to which I have ever listened. However, there is disagreement over the reporting of this quote in the newspapers of the time, and it may be that Einstein was not actually referring to the theory as a whole but to Limater's proposal that cosmic rays may in fact be the leftover artifacts of the initial explosion. Later research on cosmic rays by Robert Millikan would undercut this proposal. However, in 1933, when he resumed his theory of the expanding universe and published a more detailed version in the annals of the Scientific Society of Brussels, Limater would achieve his greatest glory. Newspapers around the world called him a famous Belgian scientist and described him as the leader of the new cosmological physics. In 1936, he was elected member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. He took an active role there, becoming its president in March 1960 and remaining so until his death. During Vatican II, he was asked to serve on the first special commission to examine the question of contraception. However, as he could not travel to Rome because of his health, Limater demurred, expressing his surprise that he was even chosen, at the time telling a Dominican colleague, Henry de Reedmaten, that he thought it was dangerous for a mathematician to venture outside of his speciality. He was also named prelate in 1960 by Pope John XXIII. In 1941, he was elected member of the Royal Academy of Sciences and Arts of Belgium. In 1946, he published his book on Hypothesis de l'Atome Primitif. It would be translated into Spanish in the same year and into English in 1950. By 1951, Pope Pius XII declared that Limater's theory provided a scientific validation for Catholicism. However, Limater resented the Pope's proclamation, stating that the theory was neutral and there was neither a connection nor a contradiction between his religion and his theory. When Limater and Daniel O'Connell, the Pope's science advisor, tried to persuade the Pope not to mention creationism publicly anymore, the Pope agreed. He persuaded the Pope to stop making proclamations about cosmology. While a devout Roman Catholic, he was against mixing science with religion, though he also was of the opinion that these two fields of human experience were not in conflict. During the 1950s, he gradually gave up part of his teaching workload, ending it completely with his Emeritat in 1964. At the end of his life, he was devoted more and more to numerical calculation. He was in fact a remarkable algebraicist and arithmetical calculator. Since 1930, he used the most powerful calculating machines of the time, the Mercedes. In 1958 he was introduced to the university's Burroughs E101, its first electronic computer. Limater maintained a strong interest in the development of computers and, even more, in the problems of language and computer programming. He died on 20 June 1966, shortly after having learned of the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation.
which provided further evidence for his proposal about the birth of the universe. In 2005, Limeta was voted to the 61st place of De Groots de Belgue, a Flemish television program on the VRT. In the same year he was voted to the 78th place by the audience of the Les Plus Grand Belges, a television show of the RTBF work. Limeta was a pioneer in applying Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity to cosmology. In a 1927 article, which preceded Edwin Hubble's landmark article by two years, Limeta derived what became known as Hubble's law and proposed it as a generic phenomenon in relativistic cosmology. Limeta also estimated the numerical value of the Hubble constant. However, the data used by Limeta did not allow him to prove that there was an actual linear relation, which Hubble did two years later. Einstein was skeptical of this paper. When Limeta approached Einstein at the 1927 Solvay conference, the latter pointed out that Alexander Friedman had proposed a similar solution to Einstein's equations in 1922, implying that the radius of the universe increased over time. In 1931, his Annus Mirabilis, Limeta published an article in Nature setting out his theory of the primeval atom. Friedman was handicapped by living and working in the USSR and died in 1925, soon after inventing the friedman limeter robertson walker metric. Because Limeta spent his entire career in Europe, his scientific work is not as well known in the United States as that of Hubble or Einstein, both well known in the U.S. by virtue of residing there. Nevertheless, Limeta's theory changed the course of cosmology. This was because Limeta was well acquainted with the work of astronomers, and designed his theory to have testable implications and to be in accord with observations of the time, in particular to explain the observed redshift of galaxies and the linear relation between distances and velocities, proposed his theory at an opportune time. Since Edwin Hubble would soon publish his velocity-distance relation that strongly supported an expanding universe and, consequently, the Big Bang Theory, had studied under Arthur Eddington, who made sure that Limeta got a hearing in the scientific community. Both Friedman and Limeta proposed relativistic cosmologies featuring an expanding universe. However, Limeta was the first to propose that the expansion explains the redshift of galaxies. He further concluded that an initial, creation-like, event must have occurred. In the 1980s, Alan Guth and Andre Lind modified this theory by adding to it a period of inflation. Einstein at first dismissed Friedman, and then Limeta, out of hand, saying that not all mathematics lead to correct theories. After Hubble's discovery was published, Einstein quickly and publicly endorsed Limeta's theory, helping both the theory and its proposer get fast recognition. Limeta was also an early adopter of computers for cosmological calculations. He introduced the first computer to his university in 1958 and was one of the inventors of the fast Fourier transform algorithm. In 1933, Limeta found an important inhomogeneous solution of Einstein's field equations describing a spherical dust cloud, the limeta tolman metric. In 1931, Limeta was the first scientist to propose the expansion of the universe was actually accelerating which was confirmed observationally in the 1990s, through observations of very distant Hypia supernova with the Hubble Space Telescope. In 1948 Limeta published a polished mathematical essay, Quaternions a Spes Elliptica, which clarified an obscure space. William Kingdon Clifford had cryptically described elliptic space in 1873 at a time when verses were too common to mention. Limeta developed the theory of quaternions from first principles so that his essay can stand on its own, but he recalled the Erlangen program in geometry while developing the metric geometry of elliptic space. H.S. M. Coxeter, another contributor to elliptic geometry, summarized Limeta's work for mathematical reviews, honors, 
On 17 March 1934, Lemaitre received the Frankie Prize, the highest Belgian scientific distinction, from King Leopold III. His proposers were Albert Einstein, Charles de la Vallée-Poussin and Alexandre de Hempton. The members of the international jury were Eddington, Langevin and Tessafile de Donda. Another distinction that the Belgian government reserves for exceptional scientists was allotted to him in 1950. The decennial prize for applied sciences for the period 1933 to 1942. In 1953, he was given the inaugural Eddington Medal awarded by the Royal Astronomical Society. Namesakes the lunar crater Limater. Limater coordinates. Limater observers in the Schwarzschild vacuum frame fields in general relativity. Minor planet 1565 Limater. The fifth automated transfer vehicle, Georges Limater ATV, Norwegian India Electronic Band Limater. Bibliography. G. Limater, Discussion sur l'évolution de l'univers, 1933. G. Limater, Hypothèse de l'atome primitive, 1946. G. Limater, The Primeval Atom, An Essay on Cosmogony. Van Nostrand Co., 1950. The Primeval Atom, in Munitz, Milton K., ed., Theories of the Universe, The Free Press, 1957, Lim Ata, The Evolution of the Universe, Discussion, Nature 128, 699-701, Bibcode, 1931 Natur, 128, 704L. DOI 10.1038-128704A0. Limata. Un univers homogene de masse constante de rayon croissant rendant compte de la vitesse radiale des nebuliuses extragalactiques. Annals of the Scientific Society of Brussels 47A. 41. G. Limata. The beginning of the world from the point of view of quantum theory. Nature 127. Bibcode 1931 Natur 127 706 L. DOI 10.1038-127706-B0. Retrieved 28 February 2012.